Hey guys. Oh yeah. How's everybody doing? All right, can you guys hear me? I'm trying out the new little microphone here. Hello, hello. Let's see if I can get out of the sun. Oh, good, Cassidy. <laughs> Thanks, because again, that time just didn't work. Hey, Magali. Welcome, welcome. Hey, from Washington. Where are you guys from? So I'm in Texas. It's still um, almost 100 degrees outside. <laughs> Hey, New York. I bet it's not 100 degrees there. Yeah. Sporting the shirt. So we made a video today. Austin, Trenton. Very nice. Making dinner. Mine's in the crock pot. Love the crock pot. Pittsburgh, Georgia. Hey, Melissa from Anna. <laughs> okay, so um, to stack or not to stack? Okay, so get a couple things out of the way. Hey, Mom, driving home. Can't wait to see you. Um, so my name is Jessica Jacobs. I'm a Platinum with Young Living and uh, 64 in Buffalo. We won't see 64 degrees for months easily. Um, okay, so this seems to be a very um, volatile question. Uh, people are diametrically opposed on this issue. And so I just had a couple thoughts about it and um, have gotten a number of questions lately on some different um, calls and things that I've been on, it's come up. And so, yeah, a lot of people seem to be really confused and um, kind of don't know where to go with it. So I thought I would throw out a couple of um, thoughts here and, um, you know, see what you guys have to say about it. So, uh, like I said, certain leaders are very opinionated on this particular issue. Yeah, feel free to give me hearts if you like what I'm saying here. That's super cool. And you can give hearts on the replay too. So if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to, you know, give me some hearts here. So, um, like I said, certain leaders are very for it or very against it. And here is what is so great about this business. We are all independent distributors. So that means that you are each your own boss. And at the end of the day, you get to make whatever decision for your business that you want to. Super cool, right? So at the end of the day, what that means is um, you are, basically your business is no one's fault but your own. <laughs> you get to be responsible for the, the decisions that you make. So first off, stacking technically is not the term that we want to use. Um, we don't stack, we, um, in Young Living, we're allowed to strategically place people. Um, stacking is a term that is actually against policies and procedures and what that technically means is when you take somebody and you put them in one leg uh, for one commission period or one month and then the next month you move them to a different leg and then the next month you move them to a different leg. That's considered stacking and that's not allowed. Um, but we are allowed to strategically place someone um, with you know other people that maybe live in the same area or you know things like that. So at one time you can put them somewhere and then leave them there. So I'm going to tell you um, kind of what I did in my business and uh, what worked for me. But like I said, at the end of the day, if you listen to some other people and you really like what they have to say, go for it. Um, I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do it. And that's, that's kind of my other thought is, first off, you get to make the decisions. And second off, there's, there's not a 100% right or wrong way to do it. And that's why it can be so confusing. So. Um, Sometimes, you know, in one situation, you'll want to put someone somewhere and sometimes you won't. I know for me personally, in the way that our compensation plan is written, um, I have signed up in my course of about two years building, I've signed up close to 80 people. I do not have 80 people in my front line. Hey, um, I do not have 80 people in my front line um, for lots of reasons. One, because the comp plan doesn't say that that's the best way to structure your organization. Um, again, if you're in a different network marketing company, don't don't listen to this because this your compensation plan is totally different and you need to study that and talk to your leaders and figure out what's right for you. So this is just for Young Living. The way our compensation plan is written with the rising star bonus, you have to have seven strong legs in order to get all of those shares. Um, in order to hit Royal Crown Diamond, you have to have seven strong legs. Now that does not mean you only have seven people in your front line, um, but you don't need 80 people in your front line. 
Some leaders say that you should grow completely organically. You should never, you know, any person that you introduce to the business should be in your front line. That's super cool if that's worked for them. Um, well, you need six legs, but then you need a um, thousand PGV outside of those six legs. Um, your personal order counts for PGV, but we just say seven because technically um, you need uh, a little bit of PGV outside of your six legs that would qualify you for Royal Crown Diamond. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so the thing is, most people that get into Young Living, they don't sign up and then, you know, tell you when they're, you know, ordering their kit, hey, I want to be a business builder. Sometimes you get those amazing people, uh, sometimes you get those people and then they don't do anything with it. But most of the time, I have found that for myself personally and most of my really strong builders, they fall in love with the product and then start to naturally share and then a business kind of falls in their lap. So. Most of your, your builders, you don't know right away exactly. It just happens. You don't necessarily know from day one that they want to build a business. So um, it makes it a little tricky. And that's why I say there is not a right or wrong way to do this. At the end of the day, it comes down to your personal convictions. Um, I prayed a lot about my, my people and where to put them. Um, and, you know, my personal... Uh, stance is that God knows what's going to happen before I do. So if I ask him for wisdom and I ask him for understanding, then I believe he'll, he'll help me in that, which does not mean he's a genie and he's going to tell me what to do every, you know, where to put everybody. Hey, Jordan. Shh. Um, but it does help. So yeah. Hey. Um, so I do think praying has helped, but again, you, you kind of, um, sometimes have to go out on a limb. Oh, okay. There was something that came out recently to indicate on indicators to identify business builders. Yeah, so there are definitely some ways um, that you could identify really good prospects. Um, okay, all right, the questions are coming and we'll get there um, in just a little bit. Okay, so remember your questions and I'll try and come back to some of Mom. them. Hey, not right now, baby, okay? Um, you put your feet off. I know, but my feet are on right now. <laughs> they say hi my little um, singing ballerina. All right, once you go in and finish the movie, I'll be in in a bit. Um, oh, we'll ask Allison to start a different one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so focus. Um, okay, so trying to identify good business builders. People that are really well connected, that have large networks of friends. Um, I, for myself, um, have lots of friends from lots of different times in my life. So I've got friends from high school, I've got friends from college, I've got friends from Bible school that I went to, I've got friends from a missionary school that I went to. Um, you know, I'm pretty plugged into my church. Uh, yeah, mommy and leader, that is for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Magali. Um, so I've got lots of different groups of friends. That typically is going to make for a pretty good network marketer. Um, someone that has kind of experienced things, maybe lived different places, um, that has a wide sphere of influence, those, you know, those are going to be people um, that have a lot of potential. Uh, people that other people follow is, is a good, you know, a good indicator. If you see your friends post something on Facebook, like for example, they post that they just got a stitch fix and they love it and you know here's their referral link and they get like 30 comments on it people saying oh man I've been wanting to try this thanks I'll use your referral link or they post you know their nails and 15 people want to know where they got their nails done okay those are the type of people that would probably be really good at this business um, so there are ways that you can kind of gauge where people are at um, you know if you know that someone has a really good story with oils or they're very naturally minded those are things that you know they're probably they could probably be very do very well at this business okay so um, when it comes to stacking, yeah, don't just put seven people in your front line. Um, that's not the best idea. For me personally, I typically, um, I do strategically place. If I say stack, I mean strategically place. <laughs> um, I, I have, it's worked very well for me. Uh, here's some of the reasons why. Um, first of all, like I mentioned, the compensation plan backs this strategy up in my opinion. Okay. If you don't think it does, that's totally cool. We can still be friends. Okay. <laughs> um, but the way that you rise to the top ranks, the way that you earn the most money from the shares is by getting seven legs really strong. It doesn't really do me any good to have 80 people in my front line and trying to help every single one of those people build. Okay. I don't need 80 legs. 
The other thing that it does is it focuses my concentration not only on less people, but it helps those legs get stronger because as I help those legs and I strategically place people, I'm helping all of those legs rise. And because it's uh, more of a streamlined, it's a smaller group of people, I can help them to rise faster, which means I can rank up faster, okay? One of your really big goals should be to develop leaders under you and to get the people under you to silver. Okay, silver is your, your um, there's a really big delineation in the compensation plan at silver. You make a lot more money at silver without having to sign as many people up. Before you hit silver, in order to make a lot of money in the business, you really have to sign people up. That's where you get the most bang for your buck money wise. Once you hit silver, you start to get shares, which are a lot bigger than the rising star bonus shares. Can you please stop? The um, leadership shares or the generation shares are bigger. The other thing is you get a percentage of your OGV. So now all of a sudden you get a percentage of your entire organization on top of the regular, regular unilevel um, percentages. So um, developing leaders under you, wider mm, will, um, I'm not going to say they're wrong, but developing <laughs> developing silvers under you is the way to make money. The reason they probably say that is anybody in your front line you make 8% from. When you strategically place someone, that percentage goes down. However, when you develop silvers under you, you make way more than that 3% difference. Way more. I promise. <laughs> Um, I was able, because I strategically placed people under me, I was able to get people to, um, you have 20 days from the time you sign someone up to move them. So um, I only have um, about 10 people, about 15, eh, maybe 12, about 12 people in my front line. I had signed up over 80 people, okay? So if I only have 12 people in my front line, that means I moved them into other legs. Um, so again, I was able to help get other people to silver faster. First of all, if someone gets to silver, okay, so five days is through live chat, um, where you're chatting on the computer or calling in. If it's after five days, you can email resolutions and you have 20 days to move them. So you email resolutions, say that you want to change the sponsor and they can move. Okay. But if it's after 20 days, then there's a whole long process and you don't want to do that. Okay, so make sure that you do it before 20 days. Yeah, but five days is live chat and it'll happen instantly. If you do it on live chat or um, call in, they will move them like while you're on the phone. If it's resolutions, it usually takes them about a week to get to your email and then it'll happen. Okay, um, so uh, again, when you can help people get to silver, that does a number of things. First of all, your income is gonna drastically increase. If someone is making an extra thousand to $2,000 a month, they are probably not going to quit this business. Okay, so you definitely, um, they're committed, okay? My silvers are not going anywhere. Um, they make some extra money. We'll get to that in just a second. That's one of the reasons that some people say not to, to, um, to, to strategically place. Um, because I've gotten, helped other people get to silver, they're not going anywhere. They're committed, okay? That extra money, they're dependent on that each month. So they're not going anywhere. The other thing that it has done, what? Yeah, tell, yeah, okay. Tell her to give it back. Sorry. Um, the other thing is because, like, I've kind of modeled that I'm helping them and then they help their people, they're developing leaders under them, okay? Your income drastically increases when you hit silver and when you help others hit silver, okay? Um, so, one of the arguments against strategically placing is because it then people depend on the those placements they feel entitled to them and i i understand and agree that you don't want people to feel entitled jordan allison both of you inside now So I've got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and they fight constantly and it drives me nuts. They're both girls. I know. Okay, go inside and turn something on the, turn a movie on please, another Veggie Tales. Oh, perfect. Shut the door. I know. 
keeping it real. Did she really? Oh, how funny. I watched Travis's earlier, scoping from uh, wherever they were. Three boys. I don't know. It's wearing me out. Um, they were out, like, on the trail. Jared and Travis and... Oh, how funny. And then Mary. Mary must have been back at the lodge that they came back to. <laughs> hey, I can't compete with Mary Young. Maybe now that she's done, other people will join. Okay, so... Um, you know, it just, I mean, siblings fight. They just do. I had a brother that was two years younger, and we fought all the time. Um, but it, it gets old. Anyway, um, joys of being a parent. I need to put joy on both of them. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, that's my brother. You beat me up. <laughs> hey, thanks. This awesome leader told me about this great microphone and where to get it. So appreciate the tip there. Um, Okay, so, squirrel. Um, so they say, you know, they, they say that it can make people dependent on those things or feel entitled. Um, I personally have, uh, uh, I personally have never run into that issue. Um, I actually did once and I kind of nipped it in the bud. Oh, the mic, yes, it was from Amazon. Um, so I got it in two days, which was awesome. Um, if you look up, hey, from Mon Minnesota, I almost said Montana. Um, that's what I get for reading too quick. If you look up um, something about, I don't lavalier mic or something, it should pop up. It was 20 bucks, maybe? I think, yeah, Amazon. Um, okay, so, I know, sorry, I was reading too quick. Minnesota, Minnesota. Um, okay, so that's another issue. All right, we'll get there in a second. So let's talk about feeling entitled. Um, some people have said, well, if you place people under someone else and they're going to feel entitled, again, I haven't run into that issue. Um, for me, the, my second leg, so to get to silver, you need two strong legs, right? And a little bit of PV outside of there. So I had an amazing leg who took off and started building and got a couple builders under her and it just was fantastic. The second leg I needed to build because I didn't have a second leg, but I had a family member who she was spending a hundred on ER. I talked to her, said, Hey, if I put some people under you, are you okay with that? She said, sure. So I started placing some people under her. Um, she quickly found that she was getting close to executive, decided, hey, I want an aroma complete, so I'm gonna try for silver. So she did. She started building, started um, taking care of the people that I had placed under her, um, started communicating with them, really supporting them. The thing is, when you place people, um, half the time they don't even know where, like, so she started contacting them. They didn't know where she was. Awesome. They didn't know that I had placed, you know, that I had placed them under her. Um, they just knew that she was part of their Young Living support system. So you can introduce people, hey, this is so-and-so. She's part of you know, your Young Living support. She's another avenue where if you've got questions and can't get a hold of me, she's happy to help out. It doesn't have to be awkward. Um, so this is, here you go, this is what we're talking about right now. Um, I don't always explain. Um, it depends. Uh, people signed up with me because they wanted to be a part of my team, and so I still very much am the go-to person for them. Um, and I don't have a problem answering their questions, but I just bring someone along beside that can help out if I'm not able to get to their questions. And so they've they've seen her, they've met her um, at different meetings and things. She's there, and so you know we introduce her, and so then they they can talk and hit it off. And again, um, it's just someone else to help support. So with placing people, first off, my my signups have slowed down. I don't get you know. 10, 15 signups a month. Um, I get a couple. What I've actually found is when I'm able to you know, strategically place people, my leaders are super thankful and really grateful you know, that I'm, I see potential in them and that I'm willing to entrust my people to them. And that's really what it is, is you know, I see great leaders, I wanna help them in any way that I can, and putting OGV under them helps us both. Again, I'm trying to help them get to their goals, which is you know, for them to get to silver. So. Um, you know, if you if you do are one of those people that have 10 to 15 people a month signing up, then you might have to be you know a little more strategic about where you put people. Sometimes people will group people that are local located um, in the same area together, or if they're in the same group of friends um, together. So if you've got you know kind of a church group, if you sign someone up from church, you might want to put someone you know under if you've you know got that kind of leg, or if you've got um, you know a school group or something like that. You can do that. That's up to you. Um, and what I've actually found is it takes away some of the animosity that can sometimes come from these kinds of businesses. So if I've got a church group and somebody wants to sign up with me, if I place them under another friend from church, uh, yeah, right? 
Um, that's a great question. I think the most I've ever gotten is eight. Uh, and that was like once, maybe twice. And that was when I was kind of first starting out. So I don't know how to get 10 to 15. I have a really popular blog. That seems to be the way. <laughs> um, but you know what? You can still be really successful without a blog and without 10 to 15 signups a month. Promise that I am definitely, you know, I have never had that many a month. And um, I would consider myself pretty successful. So, um, yeah, those that have one, that's awesome. But they have their own issues. I promise. I've got some friends who are bloggers. And um, I was shocked when I heard how many signups they still have a month. But they have, you know, their own issues. I'm good with the way that it's set up for me. I, you know, most of mine are friends and relationships that I have. And I get to get reconnected with some of those. Somebody actually messaged me last night who I have not talked to since middle school. We were in church together. And I'm like, how cool that I get to reconnect with somebody like that and strike up, you know, a relationship again. Pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm super happy with how it's happened for me. Um, so I did have one person one time that was upset because I hadn't placed anyone under her. And she asked me about it. And I very quickly said, well, um, there is no, you know, I never promise any of my builders that I'm going to place under them. Um, now you definitely have, you have five kids. I guarantee you have something interesting to blog about. However, don't, don't waste your time doing that at this point. <laughs> I never tell people if you already have a, you know, a blog in place, awesome blog on. But if you do not have a blog, please do not feel like you have to in order to be successful. It does take a lot of time. And the people that I know that blog that are successful will tell you that it takes a lot of time and half of them would probably quit if they could. <laughs> um, Okay, trying to keep the sun out of your eyes here. Um, and it's not working so well. So anyway, um, like I said, I did have one person that had asked why I didn't place people under her. Um, and we kind of had a, a really honest conversation. And I said, well, you know, that's not anything that I promised my builders. Um, a lot of it is, you know, where I'm at. Because here's the thing. When you do strategically place, a lot of times you're placing where you need people. You know, the leg that you need for your next rank. And so sometimes you really do want to help people below you hit their rank, but other times you're pushing for a rank. And so you want to put people in a certain place. This is probably another argument for why you don't want to strategically place. And I'm totally fine with that. If you don't want to do that, you know, you don't want to run your business that way. Um, but this is what has worked for me. And, I, and I really enjoy it, like I said. And so one of the things, you know, to help people not um, be entitled is you might want to, you know, spread them out. Um, if you've got four, five good legs going, you know, each month you might want to put some one somewhere different um, I probably strategically placed a little bit too hard in my second leg for silver and it took me longer to get to gold and it's taking me longer well it took me longer to get to platinum and you know now I'm having to work really hard to get to diamond but it's okay you know like I said there is no right or wrong way you are all I guarantee you every single person in this business what is looking back at something you know something either they didn't place too you know enough or they placed too much or and they're going oh man I wish I would have put this person here or I wish I would have put this person here or if I you know if I would have known that this person was gonna build I would have put him somewhere different there's always gonna be regrets and so it's one of the curses of strategically placing but I definitely think that there are way more benefits and way more blessings to strategically placing um, and that is my personal opinion and if you don't agree with it it's okay like I said we can still be friends I still you know think that you can be successful um, some people believe in organic growth and you know they want their people to do that um, I personally believe hold on I'm trying to plug my battery in here um, I personally believe that getting people uh, to higher ranks yes okay so one of the things that if you're if you're um, again there isn't a you know th there isn't one way works for everyone because you've got different dynamics, you've got different people that, you know, this person was in the business for a year and then decided to take off. This person signed up and said, I'm going to be an amazing business builder and then did nothing. So one of the questions that came up was, what happens if you have a leg that you've been pe putting people under and then the top person stops, you know, building or stops ordering? Okay. So, okay, a couple things about that. First off, the way that the comp plan is written, if the top of your leg stops, you know, building, stops ordering, like, you know, quits all together, um, and you put, let's say you put 10 people in their front line. If they go away, those 10 people roll up and it's like you didn't strategically place them at all. They're just in your front line again. Yes, I know. And it's a super bummer. And I am so sorry to hear that, Brittany. Um, but it's not the end of the world. It's like you didn't strategically place them. So when I tell people it's a, you know, it can be a gamble to strategically place, even if the top of your leg drops off, 
um, it still isn't, you know, again, you had a, a way to funnel those 10 people into one leg and that was super beneficial. But if the top of that leg drops off, you still, you didn't lose those people. You're not going to lose the money. Um, you'll make the 8% like you would have if they were in your front line. Um, it's possible. I would definitely, again, talk to someone before you start placing people under them. Um, you know, it, it gets to the point where you have your strong builders and you kind of know where you want to put people. So now I, you know, I know where I'm going to be placing people. That's not a question for me. I'm not worried that one of my builders is going to drop off. Um, it did get to the place where I was um, placing people more than just below, like in my third level. I don't think I placed anyone ever below my fourth level. I did like one time. Um, I don't place below that personally, um, just because. But um, it did get to the point where I had put so many people in my second leg in their front line that I realized, okay, if I want to help her get to silver, I should help her build a leg. And so I did go one more level below that. And it did help her get to silver. And in fact, it helped that person below her get to silver. So it worked out really well for me. Um, when I look back, uh, like I said, you know, some days I'm like, oh, if I wouldn't put this person, you know, over here, then I would, I'd be diamond. I would have been diamond last fall if I hadn't done no, 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 no. But the problem with that is the other people above them wouldn't have hit silver and they might have quit. The leaders that have, you know, done really well, they wouldn't be where they're at. And so the whole game would be totally different. So you kind of can't do that. You can't look back with regret and go, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish I wouldn't have done that. You kind of have to develop, um, you know, your strategy, stick to it. Um, you know, like I said, pray about it. You can change your strategy. If you've been placing everyone in your front line and you decide you don't want to do that anymore, you get to change. Totally fine. If you've been, you know, strategically placing everyone in two legs and you decide you don't want to do that anymore, you don't have to do that anymore. Now, it's probably too late to move everyone around. You don't want to do that um, if it's been over the 20 days, but you can, you can start different today. And that's the amazing thing about this business. Starting, you know, right now, you can be different. Don't look back at all the old stuff, you know, that's exactly right. Story of my life. Um, it's not too late to start. Today, you can be different. You can start different. You can, you know, when you know better, you do better. If you didn't know any better before, you couldn't have done better. So don't kick yourself. Don't be mad at your upline. Don't be mad at, you know, any of those other things. Just decide. Oh, good, Cassidy. Thank you. Um, just decide that you're going to do it different and move on from there. Um, and just believe that, you know, what happened in the past is going to help your other people out. Um, again, I know that I have been able to, my other daughter wants to say hi, your stomach is showing, not okay. She's seven, she doesn't get to show her stomach, ever. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where I was going. Anyway, it's not too late, so you can change. And, um, oh, if you've been placing everyone in your front line and you decide you don't want to do that anymore, don't do it anymore. No matter what your upline says or doesn't say. You can develop your own beliefs and, um, you know, talk to other people. You, you don't take it just from me. Listen to other people and listen to their reasons. Um, my husband and I got in a, an interesting discussion this last week over um, allowance and chores and whether you should um, punish them for not doing chores, like by taking away their allowance. Anyway, um, so we, you know, we, we looked up some things online and read some different, you know, sides of the argument. And guess what? We get to decide what we want to do with our children. So... Um, you get to decide what you want to do with your business. And at the end of the day, you know, you're the one that gets to live with those choices. And so personally, yes, I think strategically placing is an awesome thing that our company has allowed us to do. And um, it takes full advantage of the compensation plan. It takes full advantage of empow you know, empowering people by, um, you know, again, I don't feel like you're enabling them, especially if you give them the responsibility for helping to take care of those people, okay? Set that expectation right up front. When you have that conversation with someone, um, you know, let's say that they want to build a business and, you know, you might wait until they've shown themselves a little bit, until they've hosted a class and signed up a couple people, until they've talked to them about getting on ER. You know, you might want to make sure that somebody is really um, not just all talk before you kind of gift them some members. But once they do that, be very clear about your expectations with them. Listen. Um, in order to take care of these people, um, you know, I would love for 
you to you know send out a monthly newsletter or whatever and none of these things are going to be things that they're doing extra for your people these are things that are going to benefit their business all the way around so it's not like you're doing asking them to do something you know you're not asking them to call your people you know twice a month to check up on them um, but just things that you know they should be doing for their people anyway you know um, so hey if they're going to miss their ER order for the month you know make sure that you shoot them an email or um, you know just little things like that and uh, again I wouldn't necessarily be demanding about you know but have a have an honest conversation about your expectations with it and then always make sure that those people know that you are still you know that you're still their um, their go-to you know they signed up with you for a reason so don't just write them off and say oh they're in that leg I, you, know, you need to go to that leader no no they're still your people um, you know you got that sign up bonus so you need to take care of them um, but all right so there were a couple questions I don't know if those people are still even on or if they went to eat dinner for the night um, but if I didn't answer your question, please feel free to shoot that up there. Um, but this is just something that it's come up like three or four times over the last couple of days. And I've had some people private message me asking, you know, what is it? Okay, so am I still the enroller? 98% um, of the time, yes. That is how I do it. I make someone else the sponsor, I remain the enroller. There are some people that will gift both both the sponsor and enroller to whoever they place under. Um, I almost have never done that um, because that person was still mine. I'm still going to be their go-to. I am still going to end up doing work with that person. I did the work, you know, to talk to them, to get the materials. Part of the enroller bonus, um, I used to, to give them, gift them a reference book, uh, reference materials. So that's where I take, you know, I take some of that $50 and I gift it back to them. So um, I, I, most of the time I keep that. The thing is, so okay, here's the situation. My diamond leg, I've built the entire leg. Um, it's a relative of mine and they're not interested in building. And I said, that's totally cool. You just buy your products. I'm gonna you know, place people under you. And, um, and so I built that leg. She still makes a couple hundred dollars a month because of those people that are under her because of unilevel commissions. So she still gets those commissions and she still makes, you know, it pays for her oils every month. So um, just because you don't gift them the enroller doesn't mean that they aren't going to make some money off of that. Uh, the main reason people don't strategically place, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have heard them say that they don't want to create um, entitlement issues or uh, make people dependent on that. Um, but again, I think that if you're honest about, you know, why you're doing it and <laughs> how much you're, you know, you're going to do, you can communicate to them, listen, it might be one person a month, it might be one person every six months, you know, but is it okay if I, I place a couple people under you? You know, and that's all it has to be. Um, if it is a particular, you know, if you're trying to hit silver and you are planning on stacking a number of people, you know, just tell them and listen, I'm trying to hit this rank right now. Um, for a little while, I'm going to strategically place some people under you. Um, is that going to be okay? Okay, so good question. Thank you, Cassidy. Does the sponsor get anything the first three months? Um, so the enroller gets almost all the money for the first three months. The fast start bonus is 25% um, for the first three months that gets paid to the enroller. So when I strategically place someone and I remain the enroller, I get pretty much most of the money for the first three months. After the first three months, then regular unilevel commissions kick in and that's when the sponsor is gonna make the 8%. So that's when they'll start to see a little bit of the money. I know, me too. Rising Star Bonus, um, they changed the compensation plan changed in January of 2013, 2012, 2013, and yeah, and so um, I started to build like two months later. Well, nobody really understood it at that point, and so I started to research and read. And um, I was a math teacher, and so I like numbers anyway. And one of the main things that I did, and this is if you do not understand the compensation plan, here's my best piece of advice. First of all, go read what the virtual office has to say. Read the terms and definitions document, okay? It, it's not specifically labeled a compensation plan document, but it's terms and definitions. It explains a ton. The other thing is every time you get paid, go into virtual office, open the detailed explanation and look click on every single underlined thing you can go in and it will literally tell you 
how much money you got from each person. It will tell you $2.35 from this person. You know, you got paid 8% at, you know, on this person's order and it comes out to this much. It was amazing. So for my numbers brain, where I wanted to understand where my money was coming from, every month I would log in and I would click on those numbers to see, okay, how am I getting paid? Where is this money coming from? I would, it, it showed me things that I thought I understood, but I didn't. So like, oh, why didn't I get this share? Yes, really, <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so under virtual office, um, it might be in classic viewer. I need to go back and double check. I'll do a scope on the comp plan, um, but I'm going to double check. Okay. So comp plan checks, um, in the classic virtual office, uh, when you go to my organization, okay. So under my account, you can click on my commissions and it will show you your check, right? How much you're going to get. I think if you click the little arrow, it will give you a drop down menu. And I don't really know for sure what that shows you. However, I do know for sure that, um, okay, so does it in, in the new, under my commissions, will it, does it have like the breakdown of your check? And then you can click on anything that's underlined and it will break it down even further. Cause that's, okay. So I think you have to go to classic in order to see that. So what you, oh, it does have that. Okay. Well, I know it has it in classic. Um, if you go to your classic downline viewer, um, after commissions are posted, you can click in uh, classic, I'm sorry, uh, commissions, and then it will take you to the month. Anything that's underlined, you can click on. Okay, so she's saying it's in new also. Um, I haven't checked in a while. Um, I did this religiously every month for the first like 18 months that I was building. Um, and after that, I have not done so much because I kind of get the comp plan. <laughs> Um, so I haven't checked as much in the new virtual office. So in the new virtual office, it's there too. Anything that's underlined, click on. So if you thought you were supposed to get one of the rising star bonuses, you know, or something like that, click on it and find out where your money's coming from. Um, you'll actually find out that our compensation plan is very, very generous. Um, and we have got on a little bit of a bunny trail with the compensation plan. So, um, some people say that growth needs to be, okay, I've been building the business for about two and a half years. Um, I got my kit in May of 2012, just started using them on my family, myself, um, for about six months, started sharing with the people I loved with no intention to do the business. Uh, after like four or five months of that, um, all of a sudden I had like 30 people below me and felt like God was saying, hello, I'm giving you a business. <laughs> and I finally said, okay, fine, I'm going to be a network marketer. So that was in March of 2013. Um, and so that's when I really like kicked it in. Um, I was a senior star at that point. Um, and so I hit executive two months later, hit silver five months after that, uh, gold 10 months later maybe, and then platinum 10 or 11 months after that. So um, it, it really did happen just because of a product that I loved and I was sharing with you know people that I loved. So that whole love it, share it thing that we got going on is genius totally an amazing uh, marketing um, uh, idea because that's really how most people get into this business is totally by accident. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, it is super fun to go in and see like, oh, I made $5.35 from them. And then, oh, I made, you know, and you can literally see all the different ways that your check is broken down. So that's a really good way to learn the comp plan and to understand where things come from. Um, and I did that all the time. And honestly, Anytime somebody would talk about the comp plan, partially because it was so new and a lot of people didn't really understand it at that time, I didn't believe them until I saw it on my check. You know, they'd say, oh, well, you make this percentage. And I'm like, mm, I didn't read the comp plan that way. But I would always go back to my check and look. And if it was there, awesome. I believe you now because <laughs> the numbers don't lie. Um, and so it's neat to see all the ways that the dollars and cents add up, in my opinion. But that's my green coming out. I try and keep it suppressed because I'm a very strong blue red. <laughs> but I do have some green um, and I love numbers. So anyway, um, strategically placing, that's kind of all I've got about that. Um, like I said, I learned a lot with my, my upline because of the new comp plan. Um, that is my situation as well. And I tried to set up my downline better than I was set up. Um, and they have been really successful uh, with strategically placing. Um, I've got someone um, who's on the verge of diamond um, she placed very, very well, and I'm super excited for her. 
Um, I've got a number of golds. Um, I've got a friend who, right after she got signed up, this was a couple years ago, she called and we had a really long conversation because she was about to have this really big class and have a bunch of signups. And she's like, okay, what do I do with all these people? And so we discussed it and we strategized and she placed very well and, <laughs> and she's been really successful. So, um, you know, a bug just landed on my glasses. There we go. Um, so, you know, a, a sign of a good leader is helping your people below you do better than you did and know better than you knew. So again, when you know better, you do better. So if you can help your downline to know better than you did, that's an awesome sign of a fantastic leader. Uh, being generous, uh, being, um, you know, wanting people to succeed even if it means that they go above you. Um, it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes and I won't say that it's always easy, but um, I've come to a place where I'm really excited for my people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a win-win. Like, I still make money off of, you know, them being successful. And so it's not like I'm giving things away and it's not like, you know, I'm not going to get it back. Sowing and reaping is a big thing. And that's another reason why I kind of like this, the concept of um, strategic placement. I feel like I'm sowing people into other people's businesses. And my, my desire really is to help them be more successful. So you're so welcome. Um, hopefully this helps. Um, I love the hearts, y'all. That makes me happy. All right. I need to go take care of my hoodlums and dinner. Uh, mwah, you're the best. <laughs> we need to, like, see each other face-to-face -face soon. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, good. Good, Melissa. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, y'all. So tomorrow we're going to get back to our little series on uh, empowering versus enabling. I've got, um, I'm ready for you to get there too, girl. Um, I've got a couple tips for how to empower your leaders versus enabling them. And, oh, thank you. Um, I'm super excited to share these because um, this is a topic that can be difficult and can be sticky because, um, you know, you're really, you are trying to help people, but sometimes you kind of cross that line and you end up enabling them. And that is just no fun. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. We're going to talk about that lunchtime, nap time. Uh, I'm going to shoot for like between one and two is my goal. So um, if you made it all the way through. Oh, good. Good. Well, I, I hope it helped. And um, hopefully you'll be able to gain some wisdom and do better than I did. <laughs> Um, and it will help you advance quicker um, because, you know, no matter what people say, advancing in rank is fun. And you do get paid more when you, you know, begin, especially when you hit silver. So, um, and when you help your people hit silver, they make more. And that's really cool, too. So, um, money may not be what drives you in this business, but it's definitely, um, you know, Mary Young says that money in the hands of good people can do good things. And, hey! Not so I don't know how she got back out here. Anyway, money in the hands of good people can do good things. And so it is not um, wrong to want to be successful and want to make a good income. Um, I got to bring my husband home. And I think that that is one of the coolest blessings ever, that he gets to be around our girls. I get to do life with him on a regular basis. He gets to pursue some goals and some dreams that he has had, but he's been unable to... Um, Yes, absolutely. He's been unable to do some things because he's had to spend so much time at work and then he's not able to do those because he wants to be around us at, uh, you know, night and evenings. So, um, good, good. Uh, yeah, it is not bad to want to be successful in this business and to want to do things and, you know, to give to other people um, and, and to be blessings to others. So, all right. Thank you guys for tuning in and, oh, y'all have an awesome evening. Bye.